when he began to teach them about prayer, he says, listen, remember that he is your father. And I taught you principles what the father is expecting and what the father will do for you. So when you pray, remember that he is your father. Not just God. He is your father. And he says this, our father, blessed be your name. And in the other translation it says, Our Father who are in heaven, blessed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know the prayer. You know the prayer. So in connection to the Father, I want you to see something else. As, as we already were speaking about, what the Father is all about, what He's expecting and who He is. So in prayer, there is a specific way that Jesus has shown about the fathership of His children. I want to take that example from my God and say, Lord, well, I already said that uh, I'm just about 60 years old, maybe it's a bit too late, but never too late as long you're living on this earth. You can make up with your children at your last breath. Because the legacies that you leave after you live here, the legacies that you leave with them is the remembrance who you were. And I would recommend you, don't spare moments. Go and reconcile with your children because you don't know when your last breath is going to be. Leave a good legacy before you leave earth because the legacy that you live with your kids, they will live with it. They have no other dad but you. They don't have anybody else. You are the biological father and they don't have anybody else. They, nobody will replace that. Amen. Have a good relationship with your children because they are the next generation to pass it on to others. Amen. You don't want your children to live with the baggage, problematic things. That the, my relationship was not so good with my dad, so you know, I never learned something. Let's leave, as the Bible says, a good inheritance for these children. It's not only about money. God is not, doesn't really care about money. Money is the secondly or third thing. The first thing that God cares about is your relationship. A good inheritance. When you live in a good inheritance with your children, you live in the best I mean, your relationship as an inheritance, you live in the best inheritance in the life. You, you're doing something in your life most important that you could ever done. That's the inheritance, number one, that you're looking for to live in their life. Amen. Not bitterness, not rebellion, not a broken relationship. No. Reconciliation. Let me ask you a question. Who's supposed to be smarter? Smarter, the child or the father? Oh, you don't know? So why are you so quiet? I think the father is supposed to be smarter. Because we live longer. Amen. It doesn't matter how old you are. You're, over, you're still over 20, 25, 30 years over than your child. You live that much longer. Amen. You have to learn something. Okay, my dad... As you may say, never give me anything, so I will, and I will continue that inheritance. That inheritance, that's bad. Wrong relationship inheritance stops with the blood of Jesus. Did you know that? Because God restores people's lives. Restores. And the Bible says in the book of Malachi, He restores the fathers with their children. God wants to restore that relationship between the father and the children. Look, God Himself, He is pouring Himself out into us. For God so loved the world that He gave Himself. Amen. God is restoring these things. Hallelujah. My dad could not do that. He was not a believer. He maybe wanted to, but he could not overcome himself. He was... There was a lot of bitterness in his life. But me as a believer, I understood the principle. And I came and I hugged him and I kissed him. Amen. Because I knew a broken bridge 
like Mercier, has to be fixed. Like Champlain Bridge, amen? It has to be fixed by somebody who understands the principle. When we are in Christ, when we're looking into the scriptures, who do you see our God is? Is our Father. Amen. Not demanding Father. He's a good God. A God of relationship. A God of love. A God of good discipline. A God of purity, holiness. He's the best Father you can ever have. Hallelujah. We need to take an example from our Father and do likewise with our children. Hallelujah. We need to take an example from Jesus and do likewise live with our wives. And why? Because Jesus is the, what? He is the bridegroom of the church. Is He an example? He is. We need to take an example and live with our wives as Jesus loved the church. Is that right? Sometimes it doesn't happen that way. But we have to always gear ourselves and look at Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry, I didn't follow you in this matter, but I'm changing. If I have to, I guess. Right? Hallelujah. And so wives, mothers, Proverbs, do you think that God bypassed you that you're so beautiful and nice and you didn't need a correction? Ladies, hello? Oh, yes, you do. I'll show you where it is. Do you want to see that? Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. The whole chapter is dedicated to ladies. I know you're beautiful. I know you're gentle lambs. I know that you never make mistakes. But there's still some instructions for you in the Bible. And Jesus said also, He says, Obey your husbands. Hello? <laughs> yes, especially in the Lord. So we learn from the Bible. When we are born again, we become different people. Amen. And then Jesus said this. That's not only that, but He says, Love your neighbor as yourself. So, it's not just the immediate family. It's the neighbor now. So, let's move on. We need to learn seriously. If we want change in our life, we need to learn from God what He is doing in our life. And Jesus taught this. He says, Our Father who are in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Children must realize that the fathers, they are in authority. And authority is this. I'm your father. Alright? The authority, when children understand the authority, that he is, the dad is dad, and respect that authority. Respect that authority. It's very important. Well, young kids like this, they cannot respect. They didn't learn that yet. But when they grow growing up. See, when I grew when I accepted the Lord, and I knew that my dad, we had always a, a different relationship with him, not that, the great one. So I realized when I, I was already born again, I realized what the Bible says, that my dad, he has an authority over my life. Because he's my dad. And I have, to be, I have to begin to respect him the way he is. And who, not the way, but who he is. Who he is. How can I respect my dad if he is an alcoholic, perhaps people may say. If he is on drugs, if he is doing something wrong, how can I respect my dad? You don't respect what he's doing, but you respect who he is. To you, personally. He's your dad. You see, all fixing, the, 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 the bridges that start to be fixed... Begin with the respect. If you're going to start respecting only good people, then my God, I don't know who's going to be in the church. Amen? I don't know. When anybody will come to the church and you'll say, well, I don't know this guy. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure his lifestyle and this and that. Respect is not what they do. It's who they are. You begin with this. If God did not... Do, if God did not respect us when we were still sinners, 
what would happen to us? God looked upon us not because we were sinners, but God looked upon us because we were His lost children. Do you know uh, the prodigal son, the father, he could have got so upset with his son, he took all the money that he collected for him, he spent over everything, he could have been so angry and disrespectful to him and said, I don't want to see that guy, he's a loser and just get out of my life, go and fix it. But the father respected his sonship and relationship. Not what he has done, but for who he was. And every day he would come and look far enough to see if the son, that prodigal son, is coming home. Because he knew at one point or the other, he will come home. Where else can the children go? Where else can they go? But to you, to your parents. Where can you go but to God? As the father, even if we make a mistake, is that right? There is a respect. Respect. And respect of who you are will bring that person. See, if you're going to respect somebody, not what they do, but who they are, that will bring them to you back. Respect your children. It doesn't matter what they do. Respect them because they are your children. Respect your father and mother. It doesn't matter what they do, but because of who they are. Through that respect, somebody who is who knows better can help them out. Somebody who knows better can help them out. See what I mean? God did not push us away with disrespect and say, I don't want to see you any longer. No, moreover, He has accepted us the way we were. Because of who we are. Amen. Our Father who are in heaven, we begin to respect, we begin to see that our God, we respect because He is our Father. When we are born again, when we are born again, He became our Father. Here's a respect. Here's a respect to Him. It's a respect. So we respect His ways. We believe what He says. We trust God for His word. Amen. We worship Him. We respect His ways. We respect Him. Not only once a week, but every day in our life. Our Father who are in heaven, remember this. He is your Father. He sees you. He knows you. And He is watching you. So respect Him. It's a totally different relationship. You came. You are born again. You are a di different person. Respect Him. And do the best for Him. Amen. It says, Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Here's the respect. Not just faith. It's the respect. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. I submit myself under your leadership. I submit myself under your father, uh, father, fatherhood. You are my father and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it, makes, it puts you to the kind of a position that you submit in yourself. Under his leadership. See, our heavenly father and earthly fathers are different. Earthly father can make a mistake and we sometimes cannot submit ourselves fully and totally to what, under what he is doing and what, whatever he is doing. But we just uh, 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 respect in his position. But with our heavenly father, we know that he will never do anything wrong. He will never make a mistake. So we submit in ourselves totally and fully under the leadership and relationship of our Heavenly Father. Totally and completely submitting ourselves. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then look at this. It says, give us this day our daily bread. We know that our Father will never leave us nor forsake us. It's not a prayer of a beggar. No, it's just a prayer of faith. In the other words, you can say, I will receive my daily bread. I will receive from my Father what is for me because my Father will never leave you, leave me alone. He will never leave me nor forsake me. And I know that my Father has a portion for me. Amen. My Father has a portion for me. I wish our children would think that way of us. Trust in us, knowing that we are support to them. 
And you know what? I love when my children are calling me. I love that moment. And share with me their most difficult moments. You know why? Because if the children are calling me, my children, and sharing with, with me their most difficult moments in their life, it means they trust. It means they still trust me. And it means they, they are protected knowing that they have a father who can always help them. And give them everything he has or maybe doesn't. See, I got to trust my father who is in heaven to help my children who are on earth. And I do that by faith. Amen? I do that. That's the relationship. But today is in the world especially. I heard when you're 18 years old, the parents trying to leave you and let you out from the house because you are 18, you're eligible to work. Go and find yourself a job. And pushing them away from the nest. No. We still need to learn and to allow our children if it's needed to be, to be around us so that we may give them an advice and help and blessing. Amen? Hallelujah. Give us this daily bread. I wish our, I wish our children will know that and have that relationship with us knowing that in any time of trouble we are there to, for them to help them. Till the last breath of, breath of my life. I want my children to know that. Amen. Hallelujah. That's a relationship. That's a relationship. And you know what happens when you get old? When you cannot look after yourself? When you are alone? Your relationship with children, built by God, will, will be rewarded toward you. They will never leave you nor forsake you. You are not going to be alone. The Bible says, train your children in the way they shall go. So when they are old, they will never depart from it. Amen. And I fully know and I trust that it's how we build that's how it's going to grow amen it says give us this daily bread and forgive our debts as we've forgiven our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one I, I hope you see in this prayer Something that Jesus taught us as the children of God. Not just to trust. But how we're supposed to live and behave in our life. Give us this daily bread. It means we know that our Father will never turn away from us. He will always provide and supply for us. Amen. He will forgive our debts. He will help us in every area of our life. But He looks upon us as we forgive others. Amen. That's, that's also, that is also a very important point. Well, Father's Day just passed and we're still talking about this right now today because it was pre-taped. Uh, we taped this on Father's Day here and, and at our service. And I believe this message is important because our Father, He is our God, He is our Father. And we need to know how to honor Him and follow Him and obey Him and live for Him. And then we learn from Him. We learn His fatherhood from Him with the way to be a better father, a better um, uh, follower. Uh, God is our example. And we learn in each and every day from Him all the things that He is showing us and it's a wonderful example amen well praise be to god i just want to pray for you right now believe in god for a miracle just trust in god for you i know that you're going through some 
rough times right now, but listen, God, God knows everything what we're going through and God will come through. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just praise you and thank you. We thank you for your mercy, Lord. Just bless people, touch people's lives today, minister to them, set them free and bless them in each and every way. Lord God, we just uplift your holy name because we know that you are the answer. You hold all the answers for us and we just trust in you. We just praise in you, Lord God, even though we're going through some, some tough times, but we will trust in you and continue on to walk with you and to live for your glory. So bless us today, and I just praise you and thank you. Somebody's headache just being healed in the name of Jesus. It's it's right there, and God is healing your head, and uh, you've been uh, it just like excruciating scru- pain. It was like a pound in, uh, uh, pain in your head, and God is healing you right now. God is healing somebody's nose in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I give you the praise, Father, and I thank you for your mercy. Well, we're coming to the end of this program, but I want to bring that to your attention again, that we will be coming with America meetings to Kingston, Ontario. It's 29th and 30th of July at the Ambassador Kingston Hotel and Conference Center, 1550 Princess Street, and it's Lisbon Room. And it's going to be Friday night at 29th of July at 7 p.m. And Saturday night is at 6 p.m. And then 26th and 27th of August, we are going to go to Thunder Bay, Ontario. We are renting um, an Elks Lodge Hall there. And it's um, on second floor. We're going to be at the second floor, 201 Syndicate Avenue North, Thunder Bay, Ontario. And Friday night again at 7 p.m. and Saturday night at 6 p.m. Well, here we come to the end of this program. And uh, again, thank you so much for your help and support today. Uh, Some people, they've been calling us and telling us that they're praying for us and trying to help us. We we all try to help each other. We try and be standing on, on the air. We just preaching the gospel because I know that God has given us a message for you and the ministry is for you. So we are hanging on and uh, standing on, uh, keep standing, uh, keep keep broadcasting on the air again. And uh, I just pray that you will also stand with us by faith and trust God and help us also. I just wanted to encourage you to do that. Thank you so much. God bless you. Shalom to you. And tomorrow we're going to finish this uh, message on fathers. God bless you and bye-bye. Blessed be your name, Yeshua. Blessed be your name, Yeshua. Hallelujah. We praise you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Glory to your name. Glory to your wonderful name, Jesus. Glory to your wonderful name, Lord God, I praise you. Hallelujah to you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, my Lord. Oh, my Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua.
Spirit for your goodness. Thank you, Lord God, for your presence. Come, oh precious Holy Spirit. House of David Jewish Messianic Ministry is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you. And God bless you. Shalom.